Hi guys, this should be the first video that you are watching today. You're going to watch two. So to, this first one is over footwear impressions and then there will be one over bite marks and they all go under the impression category because we're, we're going on that trend from fingerprinting. So you should have your packets. You should have already picked those up and we're going to go ahead and get started just to make sure we're all on the same page. You should have this trace evidence footwear note set. There should be a bite mark analysis note set. And then there should be a page that's titled like Ted Bundy gallery walk or something to that effect. But I will give more instructions at the end of this video and then I'll give more instructions at the end of the second video as well. So here we go. Okay, so the good news is that this video is super short. And the other one's not very long either, so you won't have to listen to me talk for very much. I know you're probably happy about that. Okay, so you are going to see quite a few similarities between foot footmark and sorry footwear impressions and fingerprints. There are three different kinds of impressions in general, and footwear would fall under these. And these are just like the three different kinds of fingerprints that we've talked about. So there are patent impressions, latent impressions, and plastic impressions. As you already know. Your patent impressions are going to be visible and they are two dimensional. So they're visible because the person has stepped or touched a colored material of some sort. So blood or paint or oil or something along those, that nature, something that leaves the impression in a colored material. Then your latent prints or latent impressions are going to be hidden, meaning that they're not obvious to the naked eye and you're going to have to use something to visualize them, either some kind of chemical that you spray and that's going to bring out those prints or some kind of physical thing that you brush on like powder that's going to bring out those prints. Your plastic impressions are going to be 3D impressions left behind in some kind of soft material. So when we think footwear, you need to be thinking along the lines of soil or sand or mud or even snow. So quite often foot impressions on footwear prints are going to be class evidence because there a lot of them are class characteristics. A lot of the impressions, sorry, have class characteristics. And it's because they are just kind of common among similar articles of footwear. So for example, tennis shoes kind of all have the same general appearance to them. Um, high heels, again, kind of all have the same general appearance to them. They're gonna leave similar prints or similar impressions if you step into something. So some of the class features of this kind of evidence would be things like the size of the shoe. Like for example, lots of people have a size 10 shoe. Lots of people have a size five shoe. Then we can look at things like thread pattern. If Nike puts out a specific kind of shoe, like for a couple of years ago when like Nike shocks were this huge deal, they made tons of Nike shocks and they all had the same overall look and appearance to the impression, to the sole of the shoe. And then of course, brand is something that's definitely going to be a class feature. Lots of us own certain brands of shoes and we tend to like certain brands of shoes. Some of us are more Adidas fans. Some of us are more Nike fans. Some of us like them all, but you're going to find tons of people that have the same shoe that you, that you have. Just like we can have class and characteristics, sorry, we can also have individual characteristics. So there are going to be unique things about our shoes that's specific just to us. And a lot of that has to do with how we walk and where we walk. So we might have an unusual wear pattern because I might put more pressure on the inside of my foot or on the outside of my foot. Or and when I say inside and outside, think like the inner part of your foot versus the the outer part. So think closer to my toe region or in line with my toe versus in line with my pinky. I might just put more pressure in those areas. If you ever look at the bottom of your shoes, like on a level surface, you might realize that some parts are worn down more than others. And that just kind of tells you where you put more pressure. Some of us might put more pressure on the front part of our feet. Like we walk on our toes. I know I am definitely guilty of that. It comes from the whole dancing background thing. But other people put more pressure on their heels. So they put their heel down 
before they put the rest of their foot down, especially runners. We tend to see that kind of movement, that kind of wear pattern on their shoes. Where you walk and the, the environment that you are often in can also leave telltale features on your shoes. Like sometimes we'll pick up pebbles or we'll pick up little shards of glass or we might like destroy a section of our shoe because the road that we walk on or the road that we run on is very rough and like a part of my shoe might tear away. So those things will all leave distinctive marks behind. So these are a few things that we can tell from shoe impressions and that should definitely say shoe and not show right here so I apologize but it's stuff like the size of the footwear so how big your your footwear is and now notice I didn't say how big your feet are because there are times where we sh wear shoes that are a little too small for us or a little too big for us we can also look at the brand of the footwear sometimes we can tell something about the sex of the wearer based on the impression left behind we can tell about the weight of the wearer depending on the how far in or how deep down that impression goes. And then we can tell a lot about the type of footwear, so high heels or boots or sneakers or flip-flops and stuff like that. So like with a lot of other forms of evidence, there are databases that keep track of impression evidence. So there is Treadmark, Soulmate, and Treadmate. And most of and all of those deal with shoes impressions shoe impressions sorry some of them deal with tire impressions but we'll get to that at a later stage okay so there are some things that will affect our shoe wear pattern and more than likely it's because it affects the way we walk or it's something about our feet themselves that affect the way we stand or the way our shoes fit so our walking habits will definitely leave telltale signs like we said before. If you walk on your toes or on your heels, if you walk with your feet straight or your toes turned in or turned out, like all of those things would, would play a factor in the kind of impression you would leave behind. Your body weight, how much you weigh, will determine where you put pressure on different parts of your feet, which would determine where you leave more distinctive marks on your shoes. The shape of your feet. Um, some of the activities that you engage in will result in you holding your body a certain way or holding your feet a certain way. The surface that we walk on can also affect the kind of pattern that we leave behind. And then if there's anything unique about our shoe itself, like if there is stuff stuck in it or holes or cuts or slashes, all of those things will leave telltale prints behind in the actual impression. Okay, so in terms of collecting and preserving impression evidence, of course, the first thing that we tend to do is we photograph. And especially when we're looking at a shoe print or a footprint, we like to include a ruler in that photograph so that we have a comparison for size. We can lift, so just like how we lift fingerprints with powder, we can dust and lift shoe prints with electrostatic dusting powder or gel lifting substances. We can also cast the print with plaster of Paris or with dental stone. Dental stone especially works really well on snow. Plaster of Paris kind of works all over. But those are our primary methods of collecting and preserving shoe evidence. Or really shoe print and you know impression type evidence. All right, so that is it for this video. So at this point, you are going to switch to your bite mark analysis video, and you will go through those notes, take down anything extra that you need to highlight, whatever you need to write down, whatever needs to be written down. And then at that point, I will give instructions at the end of that for what you're doing for the rest of class. So I will see you guys, I guess after, after spring break, sorry. It, it, went blank there for a second but yeah i will see you guys after spring break so have a great haul you know break enjoy yourselves and take care bye